Hi, everybody. Dan Ullman, Mike Beer. The DRF race of the day for Sunday, December the 27th, race number nine at Santa Anita. Let's throw up the field for the grade three Robert J. Frankel stakes, Phillies and Mares going a mile and an eighth on the turf. And remember, you can download free formulator past performances for this race on the race of the day event page at drf.com access them and handicap along with us and mike i think this is a fascinating race you've got a grade one winner in the 10 mucho unusual you've got two recent auction purchases for the mike mccarthy barn two horses you're very familiar with the one ride for the cause the five all t and perhaps waiting in the wings if you can believe it is chad brown with miss tehran add in a very interesting supporting cast and you've got a nice graded stake. Yeah, it, it is a, a very good race. I particularly like it, Dan, because even though you have that grade one winner you mentioned, Mucho Unusual, it still feels like kind of a wide open race. I mean, she's far from a standout in here, even though she has that big win a couple of starts ago. And it'll be interesting from a pace standpoint as we throw up the time form U.S. pace projector. The two she's our charm just wasn't able to get to the lead in the grade one matriarch last time out. They just went too fast for her. But stretching out to a mile and an eighth from this inside post, she should be able to make the lead. The pace should be fair. It's really all a question of whether she's this good. Yeah, whether she's this good. And I guess whether she wants the nine furlongs, too. I thought that was a little question for her. But I agree. I mean, she really should be on the early lead in this spot. And I personally, Dan, she's going to be a good price in this race. I think she's mildly dangerous. The number one is Ride for the Cause. Ride for the Cause, you correctly smoked out in the grade two Canadian two starts back at 22 to one odds. They then ran her in the EP Taylor going a mile and a quarter. And I think maybe a mile and a quarter was a little bit far for her. Now, after that race in November, she sold for a million dollars at public auction. No surprise, considering her pedigree and that she's a graded stakes winner. She's a very talented horse. And we have seen horses come from the East Coast and from Canada to California and make a. Yeah, I mean, she just makes a lot of sense in this race, I thought anyway. Her last race wasn't great. I think maybe you're right that the mile and a quarter, you know, maybe that's an excuse. She, it just didn't suit her all that well because she didn't finish that strongly in there. But, you know, her prior form, especially since she's come back from that layoff, I think they've all been pretty good. I think she's a major, major player in here. And we've touched upon she's our charm. You think that she has an outside chance in here at a very nice price because, again, she was on the chase last time out in the Matriarch. That's not her preferred running style. And two starts back, she had to go pretty fast on the lead when she was the beaten favorite in the Crosby. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm just a little bit of a fan of hers, Dan. This is from races going back. Her last two races I don't particularly like. Um, and the fact that they're the two times they ran her in stakes races, I guess that could be a little bit of a problem for her. Um, but we'll see. I think she's run some good races. I also felt like maybe getting back to Santa Anita could be good for her. Um, I think if she gets comfortable on the early lead in here, I think she could take this field a long way at a price. The three never be enough might be slightly dirtied up on paper because if you take away her two 11 furlong races, well, she's won four consecutive starts, albeit against weaker horses. She came from off that fast pace to win the Crosby over Colonial Creed and the speed that we just talked about. Last time out again, the 11 furlongs probably isn't her game. Probably not. I, I mean, I guess her form before that last one is pretty good, Dan. So maybe you want to take a look at her. I found it hard to fall in love with her. I mean, she's been beating, for the most part, weaker horses. They were running her over hurdles in Europe. I don't know. She's not my kind of horse, but she should be a good price. A horse that's just, I can't figure out, is the four Miss Tehran. And this is a filly that actually ran in a claiming race on synthetic in France and somehow came to the attention of Chad Brown and returned off of a lengthy layoff in North America with two good efforts. Now, Mike, let's take her through her trip last time out in the Forever Together. We have that replay. She did not have clear sailing. Yeah, I think it probably caused her a little bit. I mean, her problems really started at the break then because she just didn't break that sharply. So she was off the pace. And you can see her here in the stretch. The winner of the race is the four there, right to her outside. And that field glorious is just sort of keeping her over behind horses. Finally, um, her rider has to angle her sharply down to the inside. I actually feel like she finishes pretty gamely here, Dan, once she, he takes her inside. But that's far from an ideal trip for a closer. Um, I also felt like her race at Monmouth off the layoff. I mean, to me, she was best that day by a long way. She did not have a good trip that day either. Maybe she gets lucky this time and gets a trip. 
And again, she's a horse coming from the East Coast, facing a bunch of questionable horses based in Southern California. It's not like there was a lot of pace for her to run at last time out in the Forever Together either. I do know that Feel Glorious came from out of it, but Miss Tehran, as you mentioned, missed the break. And then they went 51 and changed to the half. Oh, all yeah. T. Maybe simply a change of circumstances is, and a change of scenery is what's going to put her over the top because she's two for 23 lifetime. She obviously has speed figures, at least, that make her competitive. She was purchased for $200,000 in November, and she'll make her debut for McCarthy, but I've kind of seen her act with Chad. Me too. I mean, she's just a tough horse to like. She's one of those horses that's hard to get behind because she's very talented, but she just never wins. Um, you make a good point, though. I realize that she's leaving the Chad Brown barn, but sometimes it could just be a simple change of scenery that makes a difference. Maybe it will with her. Meal ticket, the number six. Who knew first time cheek pieces was going to be such an angle? 46 to one on this race that we're going to see for meal ticket, who lagged far behind a fast pace, but got a beautiful closers ride under Tyler Bayes, was able to save ground in upper stretch. And here she comes. I mean, it's sort of, I mean, she does get a perfect trip to win here, um, but it's not like this race came out of nowhere. It's surprising to see her win at such a big price. And this is a, a mare who was dropping out of what, five or six or seven straight stakes races into an allowance race. And they just totally dismissed her. Um, she had plenty of back races um, to show up and run a race like that. And I feel like she could run another good one here. We'll see what kind of trip she gets. Colonial Creed to me is a horse that I've always thought had a little bit of ability. I'm not sure she's a true graded stakes horse, but last time out in the red carpet, another situation where maybe a mile and three eighths was a little bit far for her. And two back in the Catherine Crosby, she ran okay behind Never Be Enough. She probably needs to take a step forward from a buyer scale, but give her the right scenario from a pace and trip standpoint, and maybe she can get a piece. Yeah, I like her running style. I think she can get a good trip in this race. You know, I. You know, probably I'm wrong about this, Dan, but, you know, going back to the Catherine Crosby two back, I've just sort of decided um, that I'm going to go with She's Our Charm out of that race, even though she didn't run that well. The two horses that finished in front of her and obviously ran better than her that day, I was sort of against them in this spot. I've always had a little bit of a soft spot in my heart for the 9Z drop. This is a filly who has kind of been knocking on the door without being able to get through. I like her running style as it pertains to this race. And as we saw from the pace projector, she might be able to sit off the two She's Our Charm. Uh, she ran okay too back in the Goldicova. And last time out, the race we saw with Meal Ticket, she was up close to that fast pace, went around a tiring pace setter on the turn. I was a little disappointed she didn't get second. I was too. I, I was disappointed in her last race, especially considering the class relief she was getting there. Um, she's another one that I guess I wonder a little bit about nine furlongs for her. I don't know how far she necessarily wants to go, um, but she can get a good trip. And she has clearly improved in her recent starts for Phil D'Amato. And for a grade one stakes winner, the 10 Mucho Unusual doesn't really get a ton of respect, even though she has been a very hard hitter on this uh, circuit for a pretty long time. Now, she had no chance in the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Turf. She has draw a line through that race. Her Rodeo Drive, her grade one win, though, was, I think, more circumstantial than anything else. Boy, did she get a great trip up front under Hernandez that day. It was. I, I agree with that. Um, but she does have a grade one win. She's also twice grade one placed. I mean, it's not like um, her grade one win two back is a total fluke. She's been a good horse for a long time. In a lot of ways, she's just the horse to beat in here. And let's take a look at our top picks for the grade three Robert J. Frankel stakes. Chad Brown, the four Miss Tehran. We saw the little trip she had last time out. I actually like her at the mile and an eighth, and I think she's going to be charging in the stretch. Yeah, I don't worry about the distance with her. I'm hoping she gets a trip this time. I do feel like she's been a little unlucky in both of her starts so far. Um, so maybe she gets a little lucky this time. I probably would have taken a shot, Dan, with She's Our Charm on top. If this was maybe a mile or a mile and a 16, the mile and eight scared me a little bit. But I, I think she's dangerous on the lead. I respect Miss Tehran. I have her in there. I have the two horse in there as well. Z drop to me is just interesting from a trip standpoint, switching to Pratt. I, I think she's going to be a big price. And I'm hoping that being by lemon drop kid, she'll be able to see out the mile and an eighth with the right trip. Four, two, ten, and five for Mike. Nine, five, four, and two for me. It's the grade three Frankel, and it is your Sunday race of the day.